welcome to day seven of the Online International Fiber Festival. I am your host, Anne Frost, and today we are going to be visiting the Hebrides. The Hebrides are a collection of islands on the west coast of Scotland, and I was very lucky to be able to visit the Isle of Skye recently and get a sense of what life is like in the Hebrides. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to travel to Uist and Lewis and Harris, but we will be doing that together as we travel today through the comfort of our home Wi-Fi. Now, Many of you, I'm sure, have been eyeing that basket over my shoulder. Today is the day that we're going to dive in and learn about those yarns from the vendors in the Hebrides. To start with, we are going to talk about the Berlin Yarn Company. The Berlin Yarn Company produces yarn only from the sheep bred on crofts in the Outer Hebrides in Scotland. Sustainably produced, their yarn gleans their aesthetic qualities from the Hebridean landscape and culture. They have yarn, patterns, and Harris Tweed products, all chosen for their high quality. You can find Berlin Yarn Company in the marketplace where they are offering a 10% discount to participants of the Online International Fiber Festival. As always, make sure that you note down the code before you click through to their website. Our next vendor is Schillister Yarns. Schillister Yarns is a family-run natural dye business on the Isle of Skye. They take inspiration from the landscape that they are located in. They glean many of their own dye stuffs from the surrounding landscape, as well as using indigo and madder with their yarns. They dye British raised and spun yarns. And I have some of their yarn here to tell you about. The yarn that I have here is in two forms. First, I have this uh, cowl pattern that I recently finished myself. It just came off the needles not too long ago, so I still have ends I have to weave in. And I haven't blocked it yet, but I'm so excited to show it to you. This is the, tr the Trotternish Ridge uh, cowl. This is available in several different colorways, and it is inspired by the Trotternish Ridge, which is a uh, mountain range there on Sky, and it's very comfortable. The yarn I can wear right against my skin, no problem, and I am in love with this. I can't wait to get it finished. It's already cold enough here in Connecticut to start wearing it, so I'm looking forward to adding this to my winter wardrobe. I also have a collection of kits here for you to knit the Wee Croft House. Look at how cute this is. You see these homes all over in the Highlands and Islands. Crofts are small farms that were uh, well, and still are, <laughs> the, the, the farm model that many people live with where you have some animals, you have some crops that you plant, and some people are able to be self-sufficient living off their land, but most crofters actually need to have a second or third job. But the crofting provides um, a source of income for people. This is where a lot of the uh, wool produced in Scotland comes from actually is from crofters and many of them still live in traditional homes that look an awful lot like this. I have a collection of the different kits that are available to knit the wee croft house. As you can see each kit comes with the house color, the color for the windows, and then a different roof color. So you have like a coral, there's a blue, there's a lighter coral and the yellow Whoop, there. And I also have a picture of the yellow one knitted up. These are, uh, excuse me, these are less than 10 pounds and half of the purchase price goes to a, a charity in the UK called Shelter, which works with the homeless. So uh, your purchase of the kit is also a donation to a very good cause. Aren't these cute? I'm going to knit a whole village. I'm so excited for them. This is also, once you have the kit, you have the pattern, you can just keep going and knitting a whole neighborhood with your scrap yarn from other Shillistair projects. How's that for a deal? 
Shola Stare is very kindly offering 15% off everything in their shop except for the kits for the Wee Craft House because that is a charity uh, pattern and we want the full 50% to be able to go to that cause. So check them out in the marketplace. Make sure you write down the code before you click through and enjoy your shopping with Shola Stare. The next vendor that we have is TJ Frog. TJ Frog is run by Tanya Ashton Jones, who is a Dorset button maker, designer, hand knitter, and podcaster. Find her at the TJ Frog podcast, wherever you listen to your audio podcast. It is great. She speaks so articulately about her passions, her crafting, and her life on the Isle of Skye. Dorset buttons are a heritage craft from Tanya's home area of Dorset, England. It was a cottage industry dating back to the early 1600s. Now that she's on the Isle of Skye, Tanya draws on the landscape and history of both Dorset and Skye as she designs her yarns, Dorset button kits, jewelry, project bags, and more. She is offering 10% off on all Dorset button project and notion bags. But before you go shopping, I have so much to show you from Tanya Ashton Jones, AKA TJ Frog. I am really excited to show you these. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the Dorset Button project, uh, products that she has. So if you order a kit, this is what it comes looking like. It comes in a clear bag and it has everything that you need in the back. So if you reach inside, I'm just gonna reach in and grab everything. The, this ring is the base that you work the Dorset button around. And then you have uh, the yarn that you'll need to weave the Dorset button within that ring, as well as the, uh, the beads that you'll need for the sparkle that you'll add, and the pin back and the needle. So it really is everything that you need. And then I want you to have a look real quick at the instruction packet because this is a new craft for many people. A lot of people haven't heard of Dorset buttons before and so they think, well, how do I get that made? Tanya actually has a background in educating folks and helping them figure out how to do things. So you can see she has provided step-by-step -step instructions with thorough instructions and photos to help you figure out how to work your kit. You are going to be able to do this. I promise it's all in here, everything you need to know. I'm gonna stick this back in the bag real quick and then I wanna show you what it's gonna look like. So this is how you buy your kit. And then this is what it looks like when you're done. How is that? Wow, imagine that like as a shawl pin or just as a brooch on something that you're wearing so beautiful it's unusual people aren't used to seeing dorset buttons nice little conversation piece my daughter and i are actually arguing over who gets the finish button and who gets the kit we'll see i don't know stay tuned on who's the winner for that so they aren't all that large okay we have uh this is another dorset button brooch kit and you can see the ring there compared to the ring here so you can have like a mid-sized one and then also there are these uh, smaller ones here also that you can make to actually function as buttons if you want to these are the perfect size for like a cardigan button um, you could also use these to make some earrings or to connect together in a necklace or a bracelet you don't they they're called dorset buttons but people use them as I said for brooches and jewelry and things like that as well so also, I want to show you two products that Tanya has made to sort of branch out. The first is a creative time coloring book. And you can see it's like these adult coloring books where it's like mindfulness coloring. She has some pictures of people uh, working in yarn shops and working on dorset buttons and being in knit clubs. But then she also has uh, these beautiful layouts of the dorset buttons that it's more of like a meditative coloring thing. But that's not all. She took these images 
and created postcards with them. So there's two different versions. There's the uncolored postcard, and they're called postcards, but they do come with envelopes, so you can send them as a normal card if you want to maintain your pri privacy. Look at the little froggy in the stamp. I love it. So there's the uncolored versions, but if you're not a colorer but you like the pictures, there's also the colored pre-colored versions that you can order as well. And these images also, the images of the button also appear on the project bags and notion bags that are the, the products that are uh, part of the sale that she's offering. Now, give me a moment because a lot of that yarn over my shoulder is also from Tanya at TJ Frog. Okay, I went over and got all the yarn. I have it all here in front of me on the table and I'm going to walk you through them one by one. This is really neat stuff. It's really cool to see how Tanya has, as I said before, drawn on her Dorset heritage and her Isle of Skye uh, current living situation to create some really um, interesting and inspired yarns. So the first ones that I want to show you are uh, Cheviot yarn and she has them in pink, blue, and green. These are dyed uh, before they are spun. It's a four ply semi-worsted spin on these and the base is called Nice. It's uh, based on the, uh, the Nice rock formations from the Isle of Skye. And you can see you get the wonderful tonality because it was dyed uh, before being spun up. You get lovely variations in colors. This is wool, but one of the wonderful things about wool is it keeps you warm to a point and then it will actually transfer heat away from your body. So I just, the way that these colors are just makes me think summer top, spring top, you know? And because of how great wool is, we can get away with that, right? love it. I love these colors and I can't wait to start working with them. Okay, the next ones that I have are the Dorset Down Breeds and I'm going to try and hold them all up at once. Look at that. Seven different colors. Whoops, I'm shedding. Oops, and one of them's coming apart. Oh, I just have too much yarn in front of me. Is that even a thing? How is that even possible? So we have seven different colors here for you to work with. They're all the same base. You can just see how amazing these would be for color work, right? So these are double knit worsted. They have four plies. The base of them is the chalk base, which I'm going to show you more of in a few minutes. So these are all named after bays in Dorset, where Tanya is from. So we have the purple is Dralston Bay. We have the ginger is Kimmeridge. The turquoise is Moop or Moupe, I'm sorry. Sorry, Tanya, if I'm getting that wrong. Then we have the pink is Ringstead. The yellow is Studland. The teal is Swanage. And the orange is Warborough. Aren't those great colors, though? What a cheery, like, scarf or hat or some mitts these would make, or even a whole sweater. These are great. <sighs> okay, but that's not all. We have some more colors to bring you. These are the Portland shades. Now, when Tanya was telling me about these, I kept thinking Portland, Oregon. Turns out that Portland is an island off the coast of Dorset in the English Channel, and they have their own flag, and these are the colors of the Portland flag. So you can see two very similar blues, two very similar greens and a gold. So the base of these is called uh, stone. Stone is the base color and these colors uh, in, the, in the collection and from the flag are based on the landscape of Portland. So you have this lighter green is Top Hill and Under Hill. Those are the mainland areas on Portland. And then we also have a darker blue and a lighter blue. That's the shambles and the race, referring to areas of the ocean around Portland. And then we have this gold color, which is from the Naval Coronet. On the flag, they have the Naval Coronet because that's where the Royal Navy was based for quite a while. So you can see those beautiful colors all work together well as well. Isn't that great? 
All right, but there's more. Let me get, okay, so this one, I really love the idea of. This is the Pole Dorset and Hebridean blend. So of course, Pole Dorset, it's gonna come from Dorset. The Hebridean sheep comes from the Hebrides. This is a, a blend, the base is called Marble and it's, it's inspired by Tanya herself, right? From Dorset, moved to the Hebrides. I absolutely adore this. I think this would be great for a cable knit something or as like a like a top down sweater with a, like a, a nice yoke like maybe in white I think that would be great I'm dreaming about how I'm going to use this yarn uh, so this as I said the base of this the pole door set Hebridean mix is called marble and it's lovely Okay, sorry, I'm gonna just keep touching and talking about the yarn. So this is the Dorset Down base. It's a natural cream color. She has it in three different um, sizes, uh, four ply, Aran, and chunky. I believe this is the Aran and this is the four ply. I don't think I have the chunky. Uh, it's worsted spun, which will mean it's nice and, nice and warm nice and lofty against your skin and this is the base chalk which was from the other colored ones okay so these are all of tj frog's new yarns get over to her shop and take a look at what she has and make your purchase and remember that the coupon code that you see there is good for the project bags and notion bags okay next vendor is uist wool Uist Wool aims to showcase the best of Scottish native wool through a range of yarns and woven products in natural colors and blends. It's sourced directly from crofters and wool growers in the highlands and islands and milled on North Uist. So this is the last line, LAS, from the Uist Yarn Company. Now the, or Uist Wool rather. This is sort of the base, the base of this. So this is a hundred percent scotch mule yarn and then if they take some of the scotch mule and they mix it with castle milk, castle milk moorage then you get this brownish color and if you mix the scotch mule with black wensleydale you end up with a black or a grayish color and you can see because they all have that scotch mule um, base color in them that they all work very well together you could combine them together in a project and have uh, something really lovely and special all these colors are natural blending the natural colors of the fleeces to get the different shades so that's their last line I also have here, this is the Riothar DK. This is uh, Sheviet and Zwartbulls. And again, you're gonna see on these, rather than a colorway, you're gonna see the batch number because again, they are blending the actual colors of the sheep, not uh, different dyes. So it's not a question of getting the dye combination right to match one another. It's a question of year on year, the sheep are going to be slightly differently shaded just naturally based on how much sun they get, how old they are, what their diet was like that year. And so you want to make sure that you have the same batch number so that they all came from the same sheep the same year. So you can see this is a black, gray, and white variegated yarn. That would be very fun to work with. So that's that. I also have the Fuar and DK. This one is a blend of Texel, Swartbulls, and Mixed Breeds. And you can see it's a lovely gray, uh, tonal gray color. Beautiful. And then finally, we have their Aran yarn, which is called Calma. And this is Calma Brave. This is 100% Hebridean. And look, it's even hard for you to see it. Hebrideans are naturally, uh, I would call them black. They're actually a very, very deep brown. But in the wool world, they qualify, they're what we call a black yarn. I don't know that there's any true black. I don't even know if the Welsh Black Mountain are truly black, other than just being a super duper brown. But this is 
lovely. All of these yarns, soft to the touch. I could see them as against the skin or as an outer garment that you really want to be able to stand up to the weather. So these are great. Make sure that you hop over to their website and check these out. All just work all these colors just working from the natural shades of the sheep. They are offering 15% off in their market. So make sure you mark the code down and enter it at checkout on their website. Okay, let's talk about our day. Whew, I need a break after talking about all that yarn. Wasn't that exciting? Love yarn. Okay, I could talk about it all day. I even I like got myself some tea so I could have some sips in between talking about it. But let's talk about our classes for today. Today, the first class is a recommended spinning class. Now, I know not everybody has a spinning wheel, and that is totally understandable, but you might be thinking about getting one. Or you might want to go back to the hand, uh, the spindle class. I don't have it listed here, but there is a spindle class in Craftsy and watch that one. But I think a lot of people would enjoy watching the class on how to use a spinning wheel to sort of suss out whether it's something that you want to take the plunge into doing yourself. So look for that. It's called Foundations of Spinning with Amy King. Okay. The second one is Classic Crochet Open Work with Jennifer Hansen. This is more of an advanced crochet class to start working on crochet lace and some of the things that you need to look out for as you are doing that. And finally, we have Explorations in Cables with Patty Lyons. Many people love the Erin knit sweaters, um, the Gansies that are so popular around the coasts of the UK and Ireland. And this would be a great class for starting to learn some of the techniques that you need to know in order to knit a Gansey or an Erin sweater. So have a look at that class. What am I gonna say when you're done with your classes? What do I want you to do? Go have some lunch, go get some exercise, and then come back and spend your afternoon with us. We are going to learn all about the Hebrides today. Starting off, we have a video from Tanya Ashton Jones, TJ Frog, where she takes us to some of her favorite spots around where she lives in the south of the Isle of Skye, including a walk around Armadale Castle, which is now a ruin, but the grounds are kept up and it's a beautiful spot on Skye. After that, we have a special video from Meg Rogers of the Berlin Yarn Company. Meg was involved in a uh, project this last year where she learned to weave a uh, Viking era cape using native breeds from around the North Sea area. It is an absolutely gorgeous cape and she connected her experience with a woman named uh, Order the Deep Minded who was a Viking leader, uh, you know, over a thousand years ago. And in the video, you will learn the history of Order and her people and get to see the cape on many of the women of the Hebrides as they, right after they have heard the story, they were asked to put on the cape and have their photo taken. And I found it to be a very moving video and I hope you enjoy that. After that, we have an episode with Rick Steves. If you're thinking about traveling to the Hebrides, it's always good if you're going to Europe to start with a Rick Steves video and just get that overview. And he goes into uh, the experience of visiting some of the Hebridean islands in this episode. So check that out. After that, there is a brief video by someone who is telling us about Flora McDonald's birthplace. Flora McDonald is the woman who looked after and took care of uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie when he had his failed attempt at taking the throne. Uh, many of you are familiar with that story because of the book Outlander. Uh, there are many sites in the Hebrides that are connected with Flora McDonald and a lot of them are preserved and this, uh, this video is about her birthplace. After that, there is a very interesting video. It's about 15 minutes long from an organization called Macker Life. Macker is the actual land in the Hebrides, in, in many parts of the Hebrides, that is 
uh, dependent on the crofting way of life to maintain the current ecosystem the way it is. And it's important for that because we have all these nesting birds um, and flowers and native plants that are uh, have been growing there for hundreds of years, but in order to maintain that ecosystem the way it, uh, it, it is, uh, the crofters need to be uh, maintaining their land in a certain way. It, and it really is like, it, it, it depends on the crofting to maintain this land, which is something we tend to think, oh, just leave nature alone. But a lot of animals and plants would be having serious problems if the macro were to go away. So very interesting um, video about this particular challenge in the area. After that, I have a video from Danny McCaskill called The Ridge. He is a mountain biker who decided to ride the ridge line of the mountain there in the Isle of Skye. It is scary. Try not to hold your breath while you watch, but I had about 15 heart attacks while I was watching him. It's a really thrilling show. It's, it's not super long, but it's it's something. I hope you enjoy that. And then we will move on to talk some about Harris Tweed, which of course is found there in the Hebrides. First, we have a brief uh, video from the BBC uh, talking about Harris Tweed, but it involves Alice Starmore, and she talks about dyeing the uh, yarns used in weaving the material. And then there is a video called The Astonishing Story of Harris Tweed, which comes from um, a men's clothing series. And they talk about the provenance of, of Harris Tweed and the importance of keeping up the quality. And, and you get to see it actually being woven. It's a very interesting video. Okay, after that, it's time to eat dinner. So today I have recipes from Hebridean cooks and tradition. So the first is from a Hebridean cook. It is called a ham and vegetable bake. It's a one, one dish casserole type dish. And I suggest that you find a nice crusty bread and some butter to eat with it. Maybe get yourself ingredients for a green salad as well. And then for dinner, we're gonna indulge in a little bit of candy making and make Scotch, uh, Scottish tablet. Scottish tablet is similar to fudge, but a little different. It's a little slight, it's supposed to have a slightly grainy texture to it. Other than that though, it's pretty similar to fudge. I love it. I try not to eat sugar and anytime I go to Scotland, I have to have Scottish tablet. Please don't tell anyone. After you've eaten, our evening entertainment is going to be a Kaylee. A Kaylee is a uh, get together with singing and music and dancing typically, but this Kaylee was filmed while the shutdowns were going on. So all of these performers from the Hebrides set up in their homes or outside to play the music for the Hebrides and then it was all put together with a host and I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you have like a nice blustery day wherever you are so that you can cuddle up inside and hear the wind and, and really enjoy this uh, music and the experience of being at a Kaylee even though we're socially distanced in person and even though we're far away just because of how we're doing this festival. Make sure you hop into the Online International Fiber Festival Facebook group and Ravelry group to speak to the other participants about your experience and I will see you there and I will also see you tomorrow for our last day of the festival as we go to Portugal. Bye everybody, have a great day.